Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba and welcome to our Africa for the African Tourism and Investment Conference call uh, for September 15th, 2024. And uh, we're here to talk about our wonderful and incredible upcoming schedule to uh, Egypt, November 20th to December 2nd, uh, South Africa, December 24th to January 4th. And then we're gonna set off the uh, beginning of the year in Kenya. April 4th to the 14th, then Ghana, May 24th to uh, June 5th. And then we're going to close out the year in Tanzania, and that's November 21st to, uh, excuse me, November 20th to December 2nd. So yes, family, and all those details are on our website at africaforafricans.org. And as we get closer to our Egypt journey, we're going to spend more time talking about our Egypt journey and then also the future journey of uh, next year, which is uh, Ghana, May 2025. So on that note, um, I'm going to do a screen sharing on our website, Africa for the Africans.org. And uh, once you get to our, our website, um, you'll see a full illustration of our presentation to get you prepared for the journey of a lifetime. And this is uh, organizing this uh, tour details and then highlights are on uh, YouTube and photos on uh, Facebook. Once you scroll down to the website, the main thing you're going to look for is the main menu. And then based on whatever tour interest that you have, uh, that's what you're looking to click on. And also a, a full program guide of our tours that we have done in the past. Uh, you, you can get the full layout illustration at our Africa tour books. Well, once you click on this link right here, it take you to a list of our all of our full uh, program guide. Now, this was the last tour uh, book that we completed, Ghana, July twenty twenty four. So once you click on that link, uh, it uh, opens up into a full flip book, and then also you can download the uh, PDF version. And so this is uh, most of the book and done in the last uh, several years, and. Yeah, so this is represent the uh, best of the books that we have. So Tanzania, South Africa, more Ghana, Senegal, the Gambia, Liberia, and Morocco. And uh, then uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin. That should be one of the. Yeah, so that is a full illustration of our digital books and that's a part of our incredible technology. Now, once you're back on our main page or the featured page on our website, that's when you have a full introduction and you have a list of the different tours where the, the links will be the same links that's on the main menu to your left. And the main thing about the links that you have, once you click on them, it gives you the full tour details as far as tour overview, what's included, what's not included, day-to-day uh, -day itinerary with a list of hotels, list of uh, unique places and historical places that we're going to travel to, the time frame and the flow of the uh, flight itinerary. Then you have also the uh, general terms, uh, which is just a general terms of uh, all the parties and all the details that's involved as far as uh, you being clear about the most important information. Uh, so that's uh, always um, one of the main things to read. Then you have language translation based on whatever, whichever tour you're traveling to. And also you have uh, preparation details as far as just basically a list of all the things that we'd have talked about on the different conference calls. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's your full preparation uh, detail. So uh, once you take a look at it, if you have any questions, uh, it's, you, know, you can always... Uh, reach out uh, when we're doing a conference call or just reach out in general. All right, uh, past the list of all of the uh, tours in the country and the schedule, it's just uh, details uh, in reference to our website and the business that we do, uh, updates on next conference calls, and also an array of links as far as videos and photos. And then just a list of uh, all of the uh, Facebook pages that we have details on just to get information around. Now, as you scroll down, you'll see our 35 group uh, tour photos from 2006 to 2024. 
And uh, this is us uh, celebrating 18 years strong. And uh, these 18 years, uh, you'll see this a list of different um, um, group uh, energy. And you know it's 18 straight years. So throughout the test of time, even the last few years during the COVID era, you'll see group uh, photos and videos. Um, and that's a level of just business and re resilience, but uh, nevertheless, it's a um, nonstop uh, journey. So these are our last uh, group photos uh, in uh, July, 2024 to Ghana and uh, April, 2024 to Liberia and Morocco. And as you can see, we have the colorful uh, uh, shirts on, always in different vibrant colors uh, to match uh, the energy. And then uh, last year, uh, South Africa, December, 2023, Tanzania, November, 2023, Ghana, May, 2023, and Senegal 2023, one of the few years where we have done four full journeys, um, and as we, and that's uh, what we're on the pace to do for this year. But that is um, the the flow of this. Every few months, uh, we're just out and looking forward to more people journeying with us. And as you scroll down, uh, then you see our last few our Tanzania journey, uh, more Senegal and the Gambia. And this, uh, yeah, lots of uh, Ghana. And out of the 25 uh, journeys, 24 of them have uh, been uh, journeys to Ghana. And then what you see is the expansion of other countries and the country that comes in more so is uh, Tanzania. And then you see South Africa. And then uh, Senegal and Gambia. And once you scroll down to 2016, that's when it reduces from the two to four journeys a year. And 2017 was one of those last year, one of those first years, multiple journeys. And we scroll back up. So that's Ethiopia, Ghana, Brazil, Ghana, Togo, Benin. So that was the first uh, energy of the four journey. Um, and that's from these are uh, single journeys. So it was a boost, big boost in 2017 to where we just you know, push more energy, but it takes time to go the energy of the uh, journey. So what you see before that is uh, one journey per year. And there you go, the first journey. So there you go, family. The journey of a lifetime continues. And uh, let me... Uh, switch over to our, our other documentation, which is our YouTube page. So all these journeys that you see uh, on our website, all the previous journeys, uh, the video highlights, which is just the main highlights that we have, is right here on uh, the YouTube page, my YouTube link, which is on all aspects of anything that I've sent you. So once you're on the YouTube list, you scroll down to the first set of multiple playlists, or you can click on multiple playlists. And uh, this is the list of the last few journeys, Ghana, July, Liberia, Morocco, South Africa, Tanzania, uh, Ghana, Senegal, and Gambia. And then as you can see, it's uh, lots of videos. And as time go along, you know, after several months, all the videos and all the photos have been presented out as you just stretch it and just display it all over the uh, network. That's just share the experience. So there you go, family. Uh, so I'll just stop uh, screen sharing and just trying to see if anybody have any questions before I move on to uh, the Egypt tour to go through the itinerary, go through the details and see if anyone have any questions. And then we'll just move on to South Africa and then uh, close out with uh, Ghana and uh, Kenya. All right, and if anyone have any questions, just uh, click on um, unmute and then uh, just uh, introduce yourself and then we'll just answer your questions. All right, so family, here we are on the website, africafitafricans.org. And once you look to your left, we're going to click on our next journey, which is coming up in less um, in little over two months, which is our Egypt journey of a lifetime. Now, 
So we've been very busy at just putting it together and it is 15 of us. So if anybody just need to join us at the last minute, definitely don't want you to wait too wait, you know, wait too long past this week. Beyond that, you know, you just have to just join us on the following one. Um having everything organized for Egypt uh, is a little bit more direct where you just, you know, with time is what you don't have. So you have to do a lot of things up front. So it's uh, 15 of us strong, and um, that uh, looked like uh, basically it, unless someone is going to reach out to me in there too so we can make some final adjustment. But what we like to do is just get these things organized ahead of time so we can just get um, everyone focused and ready for the journey and knowing that things are in place. So yes, family, as you scroll to the link of Egypt, Roots and Culture Tour, November 2024, once you click on the link, uh, it's the uh, overview. All right, and the overview for all of the tours, including all of the tours that you see in the rest of the schedule, is basically given dates, um, general flight details, and ultimately what uh, the tour includes and what's not included. So in the Egypt journey, uh, just like all the other journeys, there's uh, transportation and tour tours throughout the country, daily continent and gourmet uh, dinner. And then... Uh, and this one's a little bit different. So in Luxor, now you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then other two parts of Egypt, then it's just breakfast and gourmet dinner. Uh, Five-star accommodations. These, this is a luxury journey with just incredible accommodations. Uh, entrance and access to all sites and activities. And then for those who want to get out, this, uh, you can just do some daily exercise and meditation and just join force with each other and just you know, get ready for the morning. Certified English-speaking uh, professional Egyptologists and guides. And then uh, we'd like to do a lot of social networking and just talk about business energy, but there's no business conference. Visa fees and processing, so that's in a, included. So, so far, uh, we've gotten everyone's passport details, so we're processing the visa uh, to where you just have your visa uh, ready uh, in early November. And then, you know, you have your visa, and then that's out the way, so... In the next, uh, I would say month, uh, we have a whole we have a whole lot of things just to get done, and it's just done on a daily basis. Uh, so, uh, we finalize our group our room bookings, and but based on those who are coming and roommate layout. Uh, so that's usually what we try our best to do three months ahead of time, but um, sometimes it doesn't work that simple. Um, in the case of Ghana, last journey, we had a. You know, several people honestly come on in the last month, but uh, I made it work for them. Uh, we had to hump to get visas and, you know, make it work. But, you know, but that's not the way we always want to do it. But, uh, you know, you work with the situation. But the goal is to have all these things ready at least two to three months minimum. And as time goes along, you know, the faster we just get things are done. Uh, but we're just coming in from the end of this slow COVID-19 era. So, you know, you just had to just make adjustments. All right, and what's not included is $100 group tips, lunch in Cairo and Luxor, and then any camera or camcorder fees or any additional fees outside of this, what's included. Now, as far as the uh, tour package uh, details, uh, Cairo, uh, four nights. Uh, when we first get to um, Egypt, we're going to overnight in Cairo, you know, basically just enjoy dinner, relax a little bit, and get morning for our flight to Aswan so we could be prepared for our Nile Valley our cruise. Uh, but as far as uh, Cairo, uh, most of what you see is going to be done on the end part towards the end of the journey, and that's the Grand Egyptian Museum, Giza Pyramid, uh, ATV De Desert Safari, uh, Saqqara, Tour of Old Cairo, uh, Shopping Market, uh, Cairo Tower, and we're staying at La Paz, La Passage, uh, Cairo Hotel and Casino, which is close to the airport and close movements for when we're in and out of the country. All right, and as I talk about the uh, Nile cruise, uh, luxury Nile cruise, I swan to uh, Luxor. I will stop in Kaombo and Edfu. So that's three nights, that's November 22nd to the 24th. So we're going to be arriving in uh, in Aswan, and that is going to be uh, November 22nd. So that will be perfect timing for our check-in. And then while we check in, uh, we'll do a sh nice short, uh, you know, we'll, we'll enjoy lunch at first. 
and then uh, we just make our way out to enjoy a nice tour in uh, Aswan. And the mm -hmm. next day, we have to get up early in the morning for a direct uh, bus ride to uh, to Abasimbo. So that is uh, the flow. And the flow of what I'm explaining is uh, based on the day-to-day -day flow on the actual itinerary. Uh, so you see Nubian Museum, so that will be done you know, the day when we're actually there, uh, when we just don't have a full schedule. Uh, so the uh, Abasimbo tour is going to take, you know, it's, it's kind of just wake up early in the morning and we take a three-hour bus ride and a three-hour bus ride back and looking about two hours or more or to two to three hours of the tour itself. So that is, so those are the first uh, two days. And the next day, you basically just literally just getting prepared to get on the Nile cruise and then just you know, sail on the Nile cruise and hit all these historical cultural places. So we literally, you know, to make sure we're, clear, we're literally just going to be staying on the ship uh, for about a good two nights. All right, Luxor, uh, two nights and uh, Luxor, a uh, busy time uh, where, where we have just a whole lot of uh, temples and tombs and just circle places it's um one of the places where the highlight is the valley of the kings somebody have a question i have a question somebody sure. okay uh luxor the temple luxor temple and karnak temple um will we be visiting luxor temple at night or will it be still daylight Yes, it'll be daylight. Uh, the the goal is to you know to do early movements in uh, the morning so we can just get to the main locations uh, when it's not so hot that we need full of energy. Okay. Right, and from Luxor we're gonna take a ride to a tropical paradise in Urgada just to show different phase and different uh, flow of this uh, Egypt, and this will be on a bus ride. So looking at about two to three hours. That's minimum max uh, to get to Urgada from Luxor and back. And then also, well, not back, but just to uh, go. And on our departure from Urgada, we're going to be flying to Cairo. So it's a combination of um, who's on the Nile, bus rides, and plane flights as you flow through Egypt. And the best day-to-day -day of that is going to be the itinerary. All right, and before I move on to the uh, next tour and the next journey, and also uh, the links that I went to, that's just the overview. So, you know, you want to see full details, you have the itinerary and other details, but the main thing is the itinerary as far as the full flow. So anybody have any questions, just uh, unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and let me know your questions. All right, so the next thing I'm going to move to is South Africa. All right, so the South Africa Journey of a Lifetime. Last year, we did these exact same dates, uh, December 24th to January 4th. And the flow of it is very similar. It makes some, made some adjustments because of the holiday time as far as moving around and festivals. Uh, so that's the uh, always the uh, greatest uh, experience. So as far as the uh, South Africa Journey, uh, what's included and what's not included? So the main thing that uh, you're looking at is uh, all-inclusive uh, journey and daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. So uh, for lunch, well, while we're making our way out, uh, you can always just select the lunch that you want based on you know, where we are and the destination we bring you, which is usually just some unique uh, options. As far as uh, the tours itself, transportation and tours throughout uh, South Africa, and that includes uh, your a domestic uh, flight from Johannesburg to Cape Town. And then while we're in both uh, cities, everywhere we need to go, we're just going to drive around on our tour bus. All 
right? And while we are there in South Africa, what we have set up is Johannesburg uh, five nights and Cape Town four nights. So we've made uh, adjustments based on the flow of the country. Uh, while we're there in Cape Town, we'll be at the waterfront. And while we're in Johannesburg, we'll be out in the suburbs of jo in Johannesburg uh, to give you this a better flow. So the historical and cultural parts of the country that we have set up, uh, La Sede Cultural Village, uh, that is usually what we have as this, the, the introduction. The last two times we went to South Africa, that's uh, where we stopped off at first. It's about um, an hour outside of uh, Johannesburg. And once you get out there, it just you, know, you see more of the you know the countryside of, uh, of you know, Johannesburg. But what you have is laid out as all of the or the majority of the uh, historical villages that's a part of uh, South Africa, and also let's say two, let's say two, and it's a layout of just literally this. Uh, you literally just replica where you just go and uh, the tour guides explain the history and the, the culture of the different villages and you know make some unique points and these are videos you know when we're there on site my goal is always to just record them and you know, let the tour guides uh, do their thing and so that's what I have up it's uh, literally just a great presentation of his circle villages and tour guides make it very entertaining so we spend a good amount of time in the morning at the city cultural village just to get us warmed up about the different uh, ethnic groups uh, in the country. Uh, once uh, we finish there, we proceed to the Constitutional Hill, or Old Fort at Constitutional Hill. And this very interesting tale, uh, it's um, once a prison, now it's um, a form on the uh, government side, uh, literally a courthouse. Uh, but along with the courthouse, you have the cells and a whole lot of history to it. So these are, uh, for the second time in a row, from 2019 and 2023, uh, these um, parts of the presentation was recorded in its fullest, and especially the first few days of uh, Johannesburg. Uh, so it's a lot to unpack when you get there. So when you're recording it, it's something that you can uh, share, and you can just go back on YouTube, click and watch. The next day, what we're going to have, uh, we're going to take you to the Apartheid Museum and also take you to Soweto. And Soweto is just very interested, but also this, it's one of the most in, uh, historical parts there in South Africa. So Mandela House and also Hector Peterson Museum. So when you hear about uh, Apartheid and what happened before and after Apartheid, uh, that's all connected in Soweto. Uh, so both of those are two great museums and also if you need to shop, and also there's other parts of the, you know, so whether that we move around to, last time we went to, um, went to a squatter's camp and you know, we always on the fly just go to unique places. And also we went to a music festival late, later on in the nighttime. Uh, so interesting tale when you move with us, uh, we just kind of just embrace the energy and usually we just recruit the best tour guide we can find to connect with us and just uh, share the experience. Mm -hmm. So all these things that I mentioned is just literally just on the YouTube page that I mentioned uh, when you go to so South Africa, uh, December 2023. And the best way to explain the next journey, this, the journeys that we travel on, is by literally just looking at what we have done in the past. And the goal is always to enhance it and just make it more vibrant. And the best you can do to make changes. In this case, we changed the two hotel locations to put us in uh, hotel location, probably more unique uh, in our movement. Especially when we go to Cape Town, you want to be closer to the waterfront to where you don't have to walk from the hotel. It's a simple walk because during that time of the year, traffic and moving you know, vehicles from one location to the next. But, you know, it's unfortunate, but you get around faster walking, especially if you're close to the area. So those are the things that you just analyze. And then Johannesburg is um, a city that's getting older and older. But the best part of Johannesburg is usually on the outside. And then when you're ready to do, go to... Like when we go to Constitutional Hill and we just go to other parts of Johannesburg, uh, historical, it's, you, know, you still have a quick movement. And then when we're ready to just enjoy maybe dining like we usually do on the last night in South Africa at, at Pada Pada, which is just a nice, uh, vibrant, hip uh, part of the you know, and the nightlife uh, community there in uh, Johannesburg. You just get a chance to just you know feel a different energy. So it's always uh, incredible. You know, uh, you just have to kind of just get a feel for the weather and it's 
November and December so is a big uh, difference, but uh, the main thing is just make sure that um, you just dress for all seasons or just understand that it can get a little chilly at this time of the year, whether you're in Cape Town or Johannesburg. In this case, in December, it should be a lot co cooler in J Johannesburg and a lot um, hotter in Cape Town, which is opposite in the November of the time we travel. But nevertheless, family, these are things that we go through, um, especially way before we even travel, so you're clear. Now, the other uh, tour part of uh, Johannesburg, or you know, while we're in Johannesburg, it's Palanisburg Game Reserve. So now that's not in Johannesburg, that's in Palanisburg. And you're looking at about a two hour ride out, which is kind of similar to the safaris that we have set up nowadays. It's one to two hours, uh, whether it's in Kenya, Tanzania, or South Africa. But in this case, uh, while we're out, um, you're looking at a three hour ride around the park. And you know, last uh, experience was a great experience. And you know, we have a unique company that start, we started working with. and. They able to give us give us like a literally just a private safari for our group only, so you don't have to worry about other people just taking on. Us. Literally, uh, play videos or whatever. Be able to just have a vehicle where it would accommodate all of us. Alright, Kobe, I'm just meeting you. Now, uh, Cape Town, uh, once we leave from Johannesburg, it's going to be a one-way flight. We're going to fly from Johannesburg to Cape Town and get ourselves settled. So now, let me just reiterate uh, or go over the flight uh, sequence. We leave from Atlanta, and if you have a connection flight, we connect you to Atlanta. And then from Atlanta to Johannesburg, directly on Delta Airlines. Uh, and once we're in Johannesburg, uh, when we fly from Johannesburg to Cape Town, we're going to fly on South African Airways. And then once uh, we're there and we're ready to leave, we're going to get back on a Delta flight from Cape Town directly to Atlanta. So that is our unique um, flight schedule between uh, Delta Airlines and South African Airways. And this is similar to what we have coming up in Egypt, Royal Air Morocco and Egypt Air. So these are the logistics that we work out. Now, South Africa, uh, Cape Town. So we have District 6 Museum, um, and then including the, the township tour of Langa, uh, we have Robin Island. Um, also, this um, our favorite part, uh, one of the best part of um, Cape Town is Table Mountain. Now, last time we went to Table Mountain and also Signal Hill, it was literally just nice and clear. So I was able to really just record incredible videos, some of the best videos I've recorded uh, right there in 4K high definition because it was nice and clear and the tour guide usually do his thing. So a lot of historical uh, presentation available for you just to watch too. And then this is the, the just a busy, busy area. And this is the waterfront in Cape Town. So you even have this private journeys and private tours. So when you're in Cape Town, we're gonna have two days of tours and then you have also two days of free days. So you have your own flexibility to walk down to the ocean front. If you're a shopper, you can shop. Um, you want to just enjoy a different experience um, or in general, stay longer. You can stay longer and then return later. Uh, that's the outbound flight literally from Cape Town directly to Atlanta. I, I just, got a quick question real uh, quick. Uh, Bomani, this is Kalia. Uh, greetings are Kalia. Um, so... If a person wanted to get their own direct flight from Atlanta into Cape Town, um, are you able to do that with pricing? Yeah, that's no problem. I mean, uh, there's a separate price uh, for flights, uh, for tour package without flights on the website directly. So it's already set up already. So you either pay for the package with the flights or the one without the flights. Okay, so now the continental flights, though, the, well, the domestic flights in South Africa, is then, there a way, do, can you separate those from the international flight or no? No, you can. You can separate both of them from there. They're all, um, what you call, or, uh, they're all, they're all added separate. So uh, that's uh, fine. Uh, you can always give you a price for the, 
for the domestic flight and uh, if you just want to get your own individual um, international flight and just pay for your domestic flight and a tour package. So the price ended up being um, a tour package without uh, flights. And so that's something I can always text you or email to you if you uh, have interest, but uh, you'll see it right there on the site. And let me just pull it up while we're on screen sharing. Okay. It's a long, three hour minutes on the bus. You know, just go. All right, so that's the price uh, without flights. All right, so this package does not include uh, any domestic or international flight. Catch the next. The other one includes both domestic and international. So that's right there on the tour overview. Not much sleep. All right, let me see. Someone have their TV on. If you have a TV on and you're talking, if you could just mute the TV. All right. The first two days in a nice two age, you're not going to get much sleep. There you go. Okay, so here it says uh, 4,800 um, for the flights on Delta Airlines, George, uh, from Atlanta to Johannesburg and from Cape Town to Atlanta. And then a domestic flight included from Johannesburg to Cape Town. Is That's that's the inclusive 2,800, that's including the domestic flights. No, it said... Um... Uh, 2800 for land tour accommodations only with no domestic or international flights. Okay. And then All right, so the single supplement. So those are literally our breakdown as far as uh, packages available. Okay. So you, you can't put the domestic flight yes, you added can, on to this. You, can, you can add, you know, you can add a cost and it's a cost to, to give, give you roughly just the, um, the yeah. estimate you're looking at an additional 150 for the domestic flight, so you add that onto the cost. Okay, okay, thank you. Make it uh, nice and simple. Thank you. Okay, so we're we're about a good three months away, so for those who are interested, please reach out so we can just make a final arrangement that way we can uh, get things uh, all finalized and get things going. So if you need to talk with me or Kalia or anybody else, just uh, reach out to me directly. After the call, and we can talk and get things uh yeah, well, certainly we set up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, I got you. That's it. You come in and I'm not sure why our landscape mutant. Uh Kalia, you have uh, any other questions or it sounds good to you? And again, we can always talk. Yeah, I'll call you later. Okay, excellent. That would definitely work. Okay. All right, so family, I'm going to click on Kenya. Family, we just want to close on. We're not going. So, you keep on unmuting your line. Now, you have any questions? Do you have a question? Uh, that that wasn't me, sir. I don't know. Oh, who no, that. No. It's Shelly. I can see everyone who's muted and not muted. Unless, okay. Uh, sorry, Shirley. Okay. Uh, Shirley, do you have, you have a question? JC has a question oh, for Shirley. The line for you. Go ahead. Okay. So on the return trip, when we get back to New York, we get in at 6 15 p.m. It takes a while to get through customs. Is it wise to um book overnight accommodations? You can, depends on your flow, and also the option is just to get the latest flight. But yes, it does take a... I'm, I've, I've returned twice already from that uh, flight uh, that goes from... Um, the flight from uh, on Royal Air Maroc to New York. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, not bad. Uh, you just want to give yourself about a good... Usually about an hour and a half uh, to get to your next flight. The quickest, um, I would say at least two hours. So you think it'll take at least two hours to get through customs? No, not two hours to get to customs. You want to give yourself, basically you want to give yourself two hours to get to the next flight. To be, 
to, to be ready for the next flight. So um, if your flight comes in at six o'clock, you want to make sure that your next flight is about at least by eight o'clock. You want to give yourself a two hour time frame from arrival, departure. Okay. And All if right. you have issues with final flights, you can always call me and we can look it up together and you know, find something that works with the sequence. But unfortunately, Egypt is the only journey that we have where uh, we, don't, we don't have uh, connection flights like you know Delta, Air France, and the rest of them. They have partners to get you flights all over the U.S. So in that case, um, you can let me know when you're ready, and then we'll find the right flight that will work with your schedule or work out an alternate option for you to overnight. Okay. Sounds good. Absolutely. Uh, welcome. And 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 so, what'll happen is that I'll have to call you later with that. Oh yes, absolutely. I'm on standby. Um, when you're ready, and for those who are traveling, especially to Egypt, um, I'm on standby. Please call me and make sure everything is clear. And our goal is just to get everything clear and communicate. Uh, so we have all of our passports for visas, and we have uh, all of our roommate bookings, and you know, we just. Next thing you know, we're closing on our flights and then accommodations and all that goes on within the next <laughs> days. As we just we just finished finalizing our group numbers, which is fifteen of us. Fifteen. Uh, and um, anybody that's listening that still want to travel, you have to just give me a call directly. Outside of that, we're just gonna move forward with what we have, and then anyone else want to travel, we know we just see it two years from now. That's the best we can offer and do. All right, so we contact Air Egypt for our seat assignments? Was that something you assist with? Uh, no, you just communicate with myself. Um, once I send you the flight details, it will just have details to where you log in and select seats. And then if you have any issues or have any problems, then you reach out to me. But the information that will be sent to you is to where you can log in. And then you know, you, it's an online book into where you click on the seats that you want. And then if you if it's seats that you have to pay for as far as upgrades or their policy, then you can do that on your own also. But again, uh, any issues or things that's not clear, I'd rather for you just to give me a call directly so we can I can assist you in getting it done. But you know, for some people, it's easier than other people, so it's no big deal. Uh, those who need help, um, I got your back, and those who don't, you know, proceed. Okay, so how about this dress code? Right. Like day one, day one, it's like, uh, was it red? Was it red, black, and green? And then day two, white to honor the ancestors. Uh, is that what I have on a itinerary? If that's not what I have on a itinerary, then. Well, maybe I misread. Okay. No, I mean, any code of anything we have, it'll be on a day to day itinerary or in the overview. Okay. So uh, I also read somewhere about the school supplies and the dolls. Yes, yeah, so I know what you're looking at. You're looking at the conference call uh, detail. That's specifically more to Ghana, but that's oh, okay. and things like that. Me. Anything that you have that you want to give away, we don't, we'll give it to someone in the country or a group or organization or a school, that's a church or orphanage. And that's what we usually use the uh, school supplies for, mainly the schools and orphanage directly. Okay. But as far as the uh, outfits, uh, for Egypt, um, you know, I guess once we get closer, we'll figure out any colors or outfits and, and what we're wearing for specifically. So I'll talk with our tour organizers in the country and see what they recommend. If there's any special um, part of the journey where we need to wear certain things special. So sometimes those things are mixed up with what we have in the Ghana flow itinerary, which is a little bit more unique to coat, to, to, to colors and to get ready for this ceremony and that ceremony and this business conference. Okay. All right. Um, lastly, and finally, when do we get room assignments? When we will know that because on the website, um, you listed two places, a small hotel and a apartment. All right, as far as room assignments, uh, yeah, you're a little away from there. What we have is 10 rooms. Uh, so, and you have 15 people in 10 rooms. Those who are 
pay for single supplement, uh, been given single supplement, uh, but uh, they just have your room bookings and things like that. Uh, they can't like give you any room numbers or anything, but your book for the hotels that's on the uh, actual itinerary. Now, once you get closer, especially 30 days, that's when a lot of things are a lot more clear and we can kind of proceed. And then if we need to make any change to any hotel or so on, then we kind of let you know by that time. So in a two month time frame, as we're finalizing and we'll definitely keep you posted, but uh, so far uh, we're set with what we have. Okay. And as far as flights and things like that, uh, within the next uh, two weeks, uh, those are the things that we're looking to live. We just close out. So thanks, uh, everybody, for sending in their passport information because that's also what I need to just be able to just do all your flights and your arrangement based on the exact passport information. And those are sent over to book the part the most priority of things, which is the now cruise because... When you're booking for ships, it fill up a lot faster than planes. Uh, so I wanted to make sure everybody, we're all set for our 10 rooms. And that's what I'm saying. If anybody else is trying to come on, you just have to honestly let me know. I would hate for you to say, I can't, you know, you can come, but we can't get you on, on the now cruise because there's no more, you know, there's no more beds or there's no more, what do they call it on a ship? Um, there's no more cabins. <laughs> our cabins. Uh, so... And then, you know, as time goes along, we're just looking to work on new materials that we have never worked on before, which is like the Egypt book and things like that. So uh, a lot of these journeys have been new journeys where it's had to, it, it, it has taken some time to just put all these materials together, especially on the last journey before the, the, the Ghana journey, which is Liberia and Morocco. There's fresh information coming up with fresh books, fresh designs and so on. So looking forward to doing this one for uh, Egypt. And the um, only difference is we have lots of materials here from our previous uh, journey to Egypt. All right, so the next uh, thing as we uh, pass um, by our next journeys are uh, Kenya. So Kenya is set for April 4th to the 14th. And this is Kind of similar flow to what we have on uh, Tanzania journey, except it's a little more laid back. All right, so what we have set up is a um, full uh, tour accommodations, uh, breakfast and gourmet dinner, um, access entrance to all sites, activities, uh, tour bus uh, transportation around Kenya, pick up at the airport, drop off, and moving us around from location to location. And then when we're in, Kenya, we're flying basically from Nairobi to Mombasa. Uh, you're looking at a few days, um, closer to five days in Nairobi and three days in, or three and a half days in Mombasa. And so that was uh, set to just give you less uh, movements around and the, the, the movements are simple. Uh, you leave in, you're in Nairobi, so the airport is right there. When you get to Mombasa, same thing, and you know you don't have a whole lot of uh, tours, so you have two beautiful, uh, incredible resorts. You'll be able to relax, enjoy paradise, and also be able to just uh, enjoy an incredible tour list or a list of tour sites along the uh, nine-day tour flow and itinerary. And the things that are not included is uh, lunch, group tips, and also any camera camcorder fees. And then the Kenya visas, a visa you can get either on arrival, uh, but the goal is to assist you in getting visas as usual ahead of time. And if it's something that we can help with, um, we will work it out. Um, over the last three journeys, we've been able to work out visas for two of the three groups. Uh, the one that we can't work out is Ghana. I just have to either help you or you just got to do it on your own. But um, uh, I don't have anyone in the country that can just get all your visas done like like in Liberia and in Egypt. So nevertheless, uh, that situation, um, so anyone need any help with any visas for any country or any situation? I was just here earlier helping someone that's not traveling with us with a uh, Ghana visa and it does take time and so on. Uh, but if you're traveling with me, 
uh, that's the professional help that's included. And if you're not traveling with me, then, you know, we bill you an invoice or give you a price to assess you. Uh, so that is that uh, situation. But it's not bad. Uh, once you get the email, I would say that you'll be able to complete the visa. But at the same time, too, it's all technical. So different people, and it's also administrative. So different people handle those processes different. So I'm not here to judge you. And never am I in the world of technology because that's how I've been able to make my living for two decades. Um, you know, this working in the area of um, technology support, aircraft systems, computer systems, um, and electronic uh, technical support. So, um, but nevertheless, anyone needs any help, um, you know, we can help you get it done and it's no big deal. Uh, one thing I would say that's following my flow, my directions. Uh, the main thing I always start with is with me. I always start with an email, so I'll email the initial information. And almost most people don't read the details, but I usually just encourage you to read it, and um, that way you're clear on certain things. And I would literally help you to process um, and just make it simple for you. Yeah. All right, so uh, let me just uh, flow to the next package details we have, which is our Ghana journey. All right, so the same thing for the Ghana journey, except uh, this journey does not include any flights going anywhere except in, a, in Ghana and outside of Ghana. So all of your transportation while you're in Ghana will be on our tour bus. Our tour bus picks you up at the airport, and then you're literally just making your way around, you know, four days in Accra, three in Cape Coast, Elmina, and three in Kumasi, and you're with a full, the same crew and with us taking you around and connecting with the journey. Uh, what's included is uh, daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner. Uh, lunch will take you to the best place we can take you to enjoy lunch. And as far as our uh, business and investment conference and entrance and access all sites and, and activities, those things are all included. Lunch and group tips um, are not included. Any camera camcorder fees and the visa fee is $60 for a three month single entry and $100 for up to a one to five year multiple entry. And again, if you need any help, uh, the first thing to do is just read the email and then from there, start the application. And after that, I will assist you completely uh, with all the things that you need. I know it's directly intimidating, but um, I had a person here that was telling me a lot of what should be and what should be. And I was like, I get it, I understand. You feel just because you have an American passport and America, you know, people from America travel and move around that they should have no visa fees. And I'm with you on that. I don't disagree. But it's like the people from Ghana, they're not able to get visas to come to the country. When they do pay for visas, I'm almost guaranteeing you 90% of them get denied for their visas. So that's another situation that you're dealing with. So I'm just thankful that when we apply for all visas, all visas get approved and you can enjoy yourself in a wonderful country. And so... That's it, but then there are certain countries like Senegal and South Africa, uh, no visas. Tanzania, the visa is simple, it's all online, but when you're like myself and you go to Tanzania every year, you're paying $100 for a visa every time you go. Uh, in the case of myself now, I have a Jamaican passport, so that's you know, made things a little simpler. Uh, but for those who don't have multiple passports uh, and just have your American passport, that's what you have to work with. Some countries you're gonna do you have to pay visas and some countries you don't, but uh it's uh not the worst thing. When we're in Ghana, it's um a whole lot of historical places. So the last uh, set of Ghana videos that we have, what you see is the Black Star Independence Square, the W E B Du Bois uh Center, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the University of Ghana, and uh the Abri um uh, Botanical Garden uh we're able to make uh, because it's so supposed to be some kind of strike. Uh, who knows, but uh, it wasn't open or accessible. Uh, we drove by Rita Marley House, the home of Studio One, and went up to Trinity Home Foundation or Trinity Academy to donate school supplies and also a lot of great shopping at the Avery Wood Carbon Village. And then um, the last video that uh, we have ready to go is the Repatriation Investment Conference videos. So this is the same sequence 
as our current journey, our previous journey that we went on the last two years that we'll have is just we fine tune a few things. And the biggest thing is going to be what you see next is uh, we just have a new resort in Cape Coast, Elmina. But uh, continuing on to our Accra, uh, outside of Accra, we have Ningo Prom Prom Community. We have a house tour there. We have a historical, um, beautiful uh, lunch there at the African Ancestral Wall. Uh, we have lodging at MJ Grand. So this is like one of our best highlights in Africa, this entire schedule right there. It's four nights uh, there and you have three back-to-back -back, uh, journeys uh, with a business conference. So you're literally drained after that. I'm being real with you. So then we just slow it down. Um, once we take it to uh, Black Star Pan-African Community, which is about 90 minutes from Accra, and then you just enjoy that historical tour of this future energy and future community that we're going to build. I don't know what different people think or whatever, but it's like we built a foundation that we've been able to pace ourselves on. And then every year we show you more and more. So the next set of videos after the business conference is going to be the videos about the uh, community and our office and just us looking forward, uh, especially after this, this surviving, this slowdown of the world economy with COVID-19 and being able to just uh, see more people just look at the world positive and get back to international business and affairs. So the town that we're going to visit is Jahadzi. And uh, Jahadzi is an incredible town right there by the ocean. Uh, where our property and land is, is anywhere from two miles to one miles from the ocean. And we look at it as a transformation that will happen in the future. And uh, us as a group of people will be a part of it. And there will be just a nice town to where, you know, you have a incredible African diaspora energy deal with the local community and the local people and being able to work towards building something exceptional and also looking to all this technology in this house right here and at our operation here look forward to just get that established on a bigger scale to where you have more space and you can train and get a new generation of energy ready for uh, Africa tourism and also uh, technical support and this um, technology expertise in all aspects. That's a family, uh, that's a hopeful journey and that's the um, only parts of Africa where we've made an investment and, but that's our future getaway, building that town, building that community. And, um, and that's the only thing I tell people, don't bet against us. And so moving forward, uh, once we finish there and you just um, are completely just kind of just burned out and tired, then we take you to uh, the resort. So this, uh, we'll say, um, Coconut Grove, that's where we went to. Uh, the schedule was still the same before we had to change at the last minute. Uh, so um, we'll hear from One Africa if they're up, then we'll see what they're dealing with, then we'll continue. But if they're still not up because they weren't available and they weren't up, uh, so we had to just move forward. And I've been able to visit Coconut Grove, but this time I was able to just stay there and just enjoy it. It's somewhere I've known of and been to uh, many times. Just, we usually stay at One Africa because that's where we have all our cultural set up. So there's a few uh, changes, but um, nevertheless, um, things just move around, but you still get the same or even a better experience. And so while we're there in Cape Coast, Elmina, we'll visit the Cape Coast African Holocaust Dungeon. Very emotional. Uh, tell everyone to open your minds and just learn and just take it all in. Uh, we have, this will be May, so school will be open. So we'll visit the Akoma Academy um, of Arts and Science there in Ayense Udu, Elmina. And then uh, for those who are not lodging with us, you know, what we had set up before, if not lodging with us at One Africa, when we get you to the Carrick Hotel, but in this case, we're able to fit everyone there at Coconut Grove. And Kumasi, you know, we all say one of the best for last, uh, just an incredible, exceptional part of uh, Africa in general, beyond the side, uh, Ghana. Uh, so always enjoy it, which you're going to spend some more time and visit more parts of the Ashanti region. Uh, but last time we did our naming ceremony there, since we moved it from uh, Elmina, and uh, we're able to this, um, and then we're able to stay at uh, the MJ Grant again because this time they had space. So uh, a few things will be adjusted on this itinerary, and then you know because you have we have two options for certain hotels and two options for other things. 
So we definitely just look at the the best last two experience and make final decisions. So whatever goes on, it's a unique experience. Uh, it's always wonderful. That's uh, making our way back to Ghana. And then sometimes we make, well, we never make any big changes. Every change, honestly, has just been gradually over the years. Um, and so some parts of Ghana, people ask you, um, are we going to the Volta region? Are we going deep into the Volta region? Are we going up to uh, the center of the country? Are we going to the Western region? But honestly, it's only 10 days, so we don't have time to do all those parts of Ghana. But at one point, have we done those parts? Yeah, we have done those parts, including other parts of Ghana. And this, even when we had 12 days, but you know, you work with the days you have. But if anyone wants to literally stay longer, especially in Ghana, always recommend it. Uh, we can always assist you and connect with you and connect you with other people to enjoy other parts of the country. Uh, big country, I've not been able to go to the northern part of the country. And that's how big it is, but I've been all over the bottom half of the country, um, as furthest as um, Togo, Benin, you know, the Volta region, Togo, Benin, all the way to the Western region, and in every single part of the actual Southern part of Ghana. So yes, family, uh, let me uh, close our screen sharing and what we have went uh, through is just a list of just uh, all of our tour overview for the last, uh, for the next uh, few journeys that we have for this year and next year. And I just want to check with anyone, if anyone have any questions, uh, if you want to talk or dialogue about anything. And again, family, if you're shy and you feel like you don't want to talk on a public recorded uh, conference call, trust me, I get it. You know, we just always want to let everyone know this is our presence. And we're here at the office of Bomani Technology, just getting things handled. And then while we're out and about, uh, you know, we can communicate. So before we close, um, and uh, again, family, this is our 18th year of our Africa tourism investment. So tell a friend, reach out to your brothers and sisters, and um, uh, the more the merrier on these journeys. Um, so help us pack uh, these uh, journeys. And as we have, you know, we may be a little too late for Egypt, unfortunately, but we do have time for South Africa and Kenya. So I'll be available on standby, but the line is open. If anyone have any questions, if anyone want to talk about anything or go to any details and beyond that, I would say if you have any other questions or you want to talk about anything in general, uh, please just post it on the uh, group WhatsApp page. And for those who are not on the group WhatsApp page, text me or reach out to me so we can add you on there. And then we'll just share those communications. That way you can always scroll up and down and you can see any updates that are, are available or any important information that you need to get. And then beyond that, our other avenues of information is uh, email and then this conference call that we do once a month. I just had something real quick to share, Bomani. This is Kalia. Um, for those traveling to Egypt, for sure, definitely don't wear sandals. Uh, have you some nice tennis shoes that, you know, I wouldn't suggest going out and buying some shiny white tennis shoes. Uh, it's very uneven terrain, especially when you're going into the Valley of the Kings and things like that. You want to have on some comfortable shoes that are um, slip proof, uh, just so you can make sure your feet are comfortable and protected. Um, and not nothing fancy, but something comfortable and something that will allow you to, to walk on uneven terrain. I just wanted to share that because I know a lot of people that have traveled to Egypt with us in, in the past had on sandals and things like that uh, when we traveled in hotter months. But you definitely want to have something closed and comfortable so that you're not slipping and sliding or your feet get tired and hurting. Because, you know, it's a valley, so you got to walk down into it. Um, and then in the temples, it's stone, so you want to have something comfortable. I just wanted to share that. All right, yes, absolutely. Uh, when was the last time that you have been to uh, Egypt? I actually just got back in um, February. We went in February. It was wonderful. It, it was a little chilly, too, as well. Uh, wasn't expecting that. Also, as many pictures as you can take in Karnak Temple, um, specifically a couple other temples. I don't know if you'll be visiting those temples. They're doing some, in quotations, reconstruction work. 
So we want to get some pictures and, and just document the changes uh, that are occurring uh, coming from a background of construction management. Um, just looking at it kind of made me upset. But anyway, uh, just document it everything as it is right now because uh, in the future it won't be like that anymore. Um, I hate to say that but it's, it's the truth. And we are seekers of truth. That's what we do. Um, we just record everything and um, looking forward to it. Um, got, you know, got, the, got the computer ready to receive all those uh, 8K and 4K files uh, to just upload and just uh, keep the energy uh, going in this modern day documentation. So with you on that, um, and um, as time come along, that's what you're gonna hear reconstruction, and you know I get it. Uh, you know you have to you're trying to preserve what you have. At least they believe in preserving stuff. You know you go to some places in the world, and uh, things that are a shamble. And uh, but yeah, but you know um, so get it while it's authentic and um, not as fabricated. Um, and also, uh, did you feel safe um, or did you feel the uh, energy of whatever is going on in the neighboring countries of Egypt? You know, every time I go, I, I feel so safe. I, I feel like it's home. In fact, when I come back to the States, I uh, go through, maybe not this time because I was so, so busy, but um, in 2022, when I came back, I definitely felt so out of place here. Uh, Man, I'm telling you, I didn't know two plus two. So um, <laughs> you definitely feel so welcome, so safe. I mean, I don't know what anybody else is talking about as far as not feeling safe or not being safe. Well, no, relative, what people are going to say is like, uh, if, there's, if there's any country that there's a neighboring war or whatever going on, you know, it's not actually going to raise concern. And it's all yeah. because educated people to educate people who don't know about what's going on because uh, unfortunately we can't depend on mass media to give proper educational information so that's why we you know those of us all of us who travel and move around and do things as a people we share information that's why you know we're more powerful as a people now because now we don't have to get brainwashed from the, from the, the, the usual suspects or sources <laughs> we can educate each other like I have friends and different countries so if there's something going on like when Ebola was going on I call you know you call your people directly in the country and they're telling you something different and then by the time yeah. you, up, you know people are depending on you not to do that research or us not to educate each other to yeah. our minds and just control us and believe in what they want us to believe so yeah so, so absolutely share uh, anything that's uh, valuable but you know naturally these are the questions you have and I did have a few people who wanted to come and I wasn't going to try to just sit there and just talk with him over and over about, I'm like, my fa my family's coming, I'm coming, my son's coming, my mother's coming. And I was like, you know, our lives matter. You know what I'm saying? We're not trying to run into a war zone. And if it was dangerous, we wouldn't put ourselves no. in that danger. And then naturally, we wouldn't put anybody else in that danger, period. Yeah. Uh, I just tell people that based on the fact that we're going and we have our people there and we have done our research, kind of just flow and trust with us because when it comes to traveling, if you just don't, if you're just not in certain loops, you're just going to make bad decisions. Like yeah. during COVID-19, some people thought they couldn't travel. And I showed them all of the videos and all of the, the places that we traveled to. I was like, yeah, life goes on. You just, you may have to just kind of follow certain protocols, but yeah, like, what's the point of just getting up every day? And it's just like, it's like, you can't do this. You can't do that. And, and so on. So we've never been a yeah. big, so that's why I believe we have to educate each other. Yeah, absolutely. We felt safe. Uh, I went with 74 individuals oh. and, um, you know, pretty large group, two, two of us is full. And uh, we didn't encounter any uh, residual war um, uh, issues, nothing at all. We moved about the country just like we did in previous years. Um, I will say it, during COVID, only thing we had to have COVID tests before we exited the country and that's more of a u.s based thing um yeah it was no issues and just like this year i just came back a few months ago from egypt there was no issues um honestly i forgot 
that situation was even going on on the border. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I didn't even realize. You know, I thought about it, like, oh yeah, yeah, that that situation. XYZ. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> no, no issues. I felt safe as a woman to walk around, even just across the street to the bodega across the street in Luxor, or uh, walking off away from the group as I'm shopping. I wouldn't suggest doing that. I go all the time. But I mean, you just get your legs, get your get your international legs first. But uh, yeah, I didn't feel unsafe at all. In fact, I felt safer over there than I do right here, walking the streets of Chicago or Washington D.C. Yeah, serious business, absolutely. Well, always appreciate your insight, and absolutely, um, you know, always appreciate you jo uh, reaching out and connecting. You know, we have to link up one day and hang out and travel and connect with some of your people. Absolutely. My pleasure, Bonani. That's 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 what I like to do. And you know, I'm always willing to jump on a call. I've been kind of busy here lately, but uh I saw the email and I was like, ooh, I got time. Let me jump on. Oh, appreciate it. Always appreciate it. And then you know, you give great insight, which is always welcome. Thanks. And uh, it's uh, it look like we have one of our other experts here, uh sister Kubi that wanna chime in. So you can always um and chime in and um or if you have anything else to share let me know before i bring someone else on uh that's pretty much it i just want to make sure my sisters and brothers know uh you don't want no corn when you come back so make sure you have all some comfortable shoes it's about money do you hear me yes absolutely oh like i was saying before like uh the sister said it's safer when you leave out of the U.S. of A than when we're here. And you know, I'm in New York. So uh, as far as Egypt, wear comfortable shoes, like she said, dress moderate, because some of us, the way we dress when we go in Muslim countries and stuff is ridiculous. And you know, I've gone um, three times in a row, 2016, 2017, and 2018. My first two groups, there were 51 and the third group, 61. And we had people that were inappropriately addressed. The people didn't say anything about them, but the way they stared and looked at them, they were just out of place. I mean, if you talk about mini shorts, hot pants, whatever you want to call the crap, it was ridiculous. So it was not just young people just like that. You had people in their 40s and 50s and 30s, but you know, people gonna do what they want to do. Uh, you also know we just came back from Portugal Friday night. Mm -hmm. And of course, the stairs and how they look, you know, look at you and everything is just uh, terrible. I'm more comfortable on the African continent than anywhere else. I'm safer. Like the sister say, I go out in a minute. I have no problem going by myself anywhere. And after 45 countries, and counting, as you may know, you know, I have no problem with that. And sometimes when people are so fearful, they're the ones sad to say they need to stay in the U.S. of A. and don't go anywhere. You know, because we can live here and we can deal with all of this stuff, whether we're in New York, Chicago, or whatever. And you say go somewhere else, somewhere else, especially Africa. It's like the fear. So I'm saying you can go through all the crap here, and then you're fearful. Now, you know, Ghana is one of my favorite places. That's home, Ghana and Togo. So I love it. So when Monty was, no, when their group goes, I try to meet up with them because when I go, I stay for two months because eventually we are planning on going back to live. So we're making preparations and I have several projects going on. So Ghana and Togo, those are my, those are my hearts. Those are my favorites of all the places. So um, just say Everybody will have a good time, you know, come in the right framework, you know, f right set of mind, you know, you'll be okay. Even the ones that are fearful. And the same people in the media don't believe all the things they say because they tell you one thing and they do something else. They tell you don't go to Africa or wherever, but they go. You I go say. You see the Chinese there. You see the white, quote on white man there. You see the Lebanese. Yeah. You know, I've seen the Mormons there. Even the yeah. Amish. <laughs> but Pennsylvania Dutch, <laughs> they're coming up in there and they're investing and doing a whole lot of things but yet still we are fearful we're here in the U.S. 
We don't own nothing. You got your house you think you own? Miss three or four of your property taxes and see whether or not you really own that home, even though you said you paid 30 year mortgage. You paid about three times of it anyway with interest and tax and stuff. So you really don't own anything. So we need to have options. Like other people have options. The continent of Africa may not be for you. Maybe it's Panama. You know, maybe it's Honduras. We are all over the place. So just don't depend on the US of A. Always have your backup plans and backups to the backups to the backups. And think long-term thinking, not just short-term thinking. And have some generational wealth. Leave stuff to, you know, our grandchildren or whoever. Have, you know, have options. That's basically what I'm saying. Have options. Don't just depend on the US of A. I say, I totally agree. Yes, Sister Akumi, appreciate the energy and the recommendation and the advice. Uh, definitely appreciate you sharing. Sometimes people don't know, they don't know. So, and if they don't know, I guess uh, at least that's what we can do is share information and educate them. So, family, uh, we are going to close out, and uh, once again, all the wonderful information for our Journeys of a Lifetime is on our website at Africa for the Africans dot uh, o r g, and uh, you can literally just navigate through and uh, check out the details. And as time go along, all the ventures that we have, I'll just keep on uploading our videos, which is the main thing that I do, just share a lot of our video highlights and uh, just let you see and feel what's going on and from our perspective and, you know, other people do journeys, but uh, you, know, you can see the difference of what we do. Um, it's just based on structure, organization and having a balanced roots and culture experience and just uh, being able to just have flexible options while you, you know, making those arrangements and, you know, and then our flow of communication from our group page to conference calls to this throughout the week. Um, we make ourselves available. So family, if uh, no one else have any questions, um, I'm going to close for the night and then I'll be on standby um, if anyone want to talk about anything. And then we just uh, move on from there. So yes. All right. Uh, so Monty, um, okay. I'm going to give everybody else a chance to give you a call uh, who's going on these specific tours. And then uh, you can give me a call uh, sometime tonight. I know you're a late night person like me. Uh, so give me a call tonight. All right, absolutely. I definitely will do that. I'll, I'll reach out to you. All right. All right, so family, uh, the journey continues. Everyone enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And thank you for joining us as the journey continues. And then uh, we'll just uh, have another conference call uh, to go over uh, other details for um uh, October or mid month October. All right, so family, take care. The journey continues and we are closing out for the night. Unless anyone, Peace. unless someone else have a question before we go. All right. All right, so perfect. Uh, good night. Peace.